If you want to use your Stream Deck as a calculator for your Mac or PC, then I've got just the video and the icon pack for you, so keep on watching. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name is Alec and today we're talking about the Stream Deck again and this is one of a series of videos that I'm doing where I'll be sharing some of the uses that I have for the Stream Deck and I'll also have icon packs to accompany all of these as well. So today we're looking at possibly not the most power user of applications, but it's the Humble Calculator. And what I've done is I've created an icon pack so that I can have all of the controls for the calculator in my Stream Deck. Now, technically, yes, you can do this with the number pad, uh, but I have added a few extra little uh, shortcuts on there as well. And well, you can't really beat the feeling of a nice clunky desktop calculator, can you? So let me show you what I'm talking about if I come over to my Stream Deck. There you can see I've got my Ecamm Live controls. I'll drop a little video up into the uh, top corner for the video I did all about how I use Ecamm Live and how I've got all of my shortcuts set up on Stream Deck. Uh, but I've just added a handy little shortcut to the calculator app here. And if I click on this one, then there you go. This is what we're talking about. It is having all of the uh, sort of number pad and controls for the calculator uh, right on your Stream Deck. So uh, the way I have done this is that obviously I've programmed all of these uh, shortcuts. They're pretty simple and it's a good introduction to what you can do with Stream Deck really because it sort of gives you an overview of how you set things up, how you add keys, how you add the uh, hotkeys and things like that. And so that is what we're going to be uh, going through. But if I can just give you a quick demonstration of exactly what this is doing. So here I've brought up on the screen the uh, Mac application, the uh, calculator application. You could equally do this with a Windows calculator as well. But as you'll see, as I type into uh, the Stream Deck, one second, how if I activate the calculator, if as I type into the Stream Deck, then it is uh, inputting what I'm typing into the, cal into the Stream Deck on the calculator. <laughs> there you go. And then the other things that I've added in here, so we've got all of the functions that you've got on the standard calculator, but then there's a couple of others such as uh, copy and paste. So some people don't realize that if you've just typed a calculation into the calculator, then just pressing copy, you don't have to highlight anything, will copy that text. So if you do need to copy it into an application, it's quite handy to have it open there. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll show you exactly how to build this out on your Stream Deck. So if I go over to my screen sharing, I've got the Stream Deck application open, which is just a little uh, menu bar item up at the top here. Uh, so you click on that to open the Stream Deck and then you can see the this is basically uh, replicating the layout that's on the Stream Deck and here is the layout of all of those keys. Now what you could do is you could set this up as a profile uh, which is whereby in Stream Deck you can have a number of profiles and then you can have it so that when you open a specific application it will load that profile. So if I created a profile here called Calculator and built this out in that and then I could just click on here and select the calculator and what that would do is every time you open the calculator Stream Deck would switch over to that icon set. Uh, personally, I don't actually use profiles. I prefer to have things in nested folders. And the reason for that is that uh, I've got a lot of apps that I've created shortcuts for and Stream Deck icons for, uh, but I'm often using these applications at the same time as each other. And sometimes I don't want it to flick from one set to another just when I hop between applications. An example of this would be, I spend a lot of time on uh, Teams meetings, uh, Zoom meetings, things like that. And we're often and discussing things that may be things in Excel for example and so I have got my sort of Excel power user icon set for Stream Deck so I'll put a link in the uh, top corner when I get around to actually making the video on that one uh, but what I wouldn't want to happen is if I'm on a Zoom call for it to switch over to the Excel icon set when I'm in Zoom and so I prefer to just have these things organized by nested folders it's sort of maximum of say three folders deep but it just means I can hop around between uh, different applications and get in and out of them quite quickly without actually worrying about the profile so there may be other uh, <laughs> viewpoints and ways to do this but this is just the way that I feel comfortable doing it so for now I'll what I'll do is I'll just uh, for the purposes of demonstration I'll just create another folder in here to give us a blank screen and so here we go, we've got a sort of blank screen to work with. And what we'll do now is we'll just actually build out that uh, calculator screen. 
with Stream Deck down the right hand side, you've got a number of different sort of groupings of the actions you can add. So we've got some system actions, some specific to Stream Deck, and then there's other applications as well. There are also a number of other applications that you can add to this. So just down at the bottom, actually just a little bit off the screen, there's a little button that says more actions and you can click on that. And what that will do is bring up a whole list of other uh, apps and things like that that you can add to your Stream Deck. And that will just import those uh, different shortcuts and things like that into your Stream Deck. But for now, we'll just work with the ones we've got. So for this setup, all we actually need is one of these system actions which is the hotkey one and so we're basically just drag this into here we can keep dragging more of these because we just want to build out the uh, the set of icons the set of buttons so in fact actually if I press uh, copy uh, then I can just actually paste this because they're all the same well there we go by the magic of technology I've saved you sitting through all of that uh, pasting of buttons there and now you can see what we've got is we've got a set of buttons now which sort of matches what this one is going to look like so I'll just talk you through now exactly how you go through and add in all of those as well so this is basically where the number pad is going to be so all the actions that I added in were uh, hotkeys so basically for you to add in a keystroke and it's quite simple we're just going to add in the keys 0 to uh, 9 here so assign hotkey if I click on uh, the 0 or oh, sorry the 7 for there on the number pad uh, so it's said number pad number 7 but you can see what we've got here is we've got the it's uh, writing that title over the top of it well, what we want to do is have that pretty little picture of the number 7 well, what I've done is I've created the icon pack and I've actually made that available so you can get that on my website for a couple of dollars. And it's basically just two sets of icons. We've got the numbers in white and in black. I'll just use the black ones for now so they show up a bit better. In fact, actually, I'll use the white ones since the other ones are black. So here you go. What you do is you just go down to the image. In fact, let me just make this a set of uh, as a list. It might be easier now that you've seen what they look like. Uh, this is the set of icons. So here we've got the number pad number seven. And all we're going to do is just click in this little key here. And then we're going to go and drag the seven image or the key image. And we'll drop that in there. But now we've still got this text over the top of it. So what we need to do is just drop down here where the title is and then you can just highlight this show title. Uh, it's obviously what this is because it's got a big number on it. But when I'm creating other icons and uh, icon sets in the uh, Stream Deck application, I always do leave a title, but I just make sure to hide it rather than just delete the title out of it because then that means when you're looking if it's not quite so obvious as a big bold number seven, then you can always see what it is. Uh, so there we go we've got the number seven so what I'm going to do now is just duplicate that for the rest of the keys so there we go that's the number pad built out if I just pop the calculator up again just in case you've forgotten what the calculator looks like <laughs> there's still a few more that I'm going to add and so the next one would be uh, here I'm going to add the uh, the period and I'll just grab that one from here and drop that over on there as well Next thing I need to do is add the divide, multiply, and so on. So I'll just go and add those in. So for the uh, divide, then that would be the slash key. So the uh, backslash. And then for the multiply, that would be the asterisk key. So we'll come in here and click asterisk. Whoops, the wrong one. Uh, asterisk. Uh, for the minus, we're going to have obviously just the minus key. And for plus, we have a plus key. I'm just using the uh, uh, number pad, but obviously you could use the uh, keys along the top row of numbers as well. And then here we've got equals. So I'll just add that one in. And then now what we want to do is add the icons for all of these. So again, just let's go through and take out the titles and then I'll add in the keys for these ones. OK, there we go. So that's nearly it for the uh, main keys that you've already got on the calculator. Uh, there's another one that's worth having on there, and that is the backspace, because some people don't realize you can actually just press the backspace and it will uh, delete what you're typing. So if you can see the calculator down here, if I just... Uh, in fact, let me just set this up first. 
uh, if I add in a keystroke and that's just the uh, backspace key if I just type something into the calculator and then we type in something in here and then if I press that backspace key then it just deletes uh, one character at a time so that's always a useful one to have in there uh, the next one that is actually on the calculator but isn't necessarily obvious for how to clear is the uh, obviously the C button and that is C or AC and that is just simply pressing escape so for this one we click to assign keystroke and click the escape key so that little symbol down there is the symbol for uh, escape so if I just drag this one down and put it onto there and then remove the title again so you can see we've nearly built it out now then next we'll add in our percentage so again keystroke shift and on my keyboard it's five and then the last two that I've added in is just simply copy and paste so click to assign shortcut so command C for that one and command V for this one so I'll go and drag the copy icon across here whoops I've dragged it to the wrong place I'll drag it to here that might help so that's copy so the last a uh, one I've got up here is actually a shortcut to the app itself now I've put keystroke there but that is not quite what that should be so let me just delete that for one moment and I'll add in it's this one this open so this opens an app so what we'll do here is we'll just go to find the uh, calculator so that just brings up a uh, the typical Mac dialog where you can select the app and I'll just pop that in there so there you go it's brought up the calculator app now it has actually bought in the icon for the app so when you do add in a uh, shortcut for an app it does automatically bring in the icon uh, so let's just hide the uh, show title there let's take that off uh, but if you want I've also included the uh, the same app basically but it's just a slightly bigger version so you'll see it takes up the full key by adding that in there as well Incidentally, the reason why you would have that open key just there for the uh, calculator is twofold, really. First of all, obviously, if you don't have the calculator open, then when you click on that, it will just open the application for you. Uh, but also, if you are uh, in another application and you're wanting to use this uh, calculator then you will need to make sure that you actually switch over to the calculator app uh, first because otherwise these inputs are uh, stream deck is basically just giving you keystrokes so unless you've got something with a bit deeper integration like the ecamm uh, ones for example where even if you're in another uh, program then if you click on the ecamm sort of change scene button or select a scene as long as ecamm's are live is open it will perform that action whereas if you're using these uh, keystroke ones in this list here then it's basically just clicking that keystroke so if I happen to be in a different application like Excel or pages or whatever it happened to be if I were to press this uh, number one button on the uh, stream deck here it would just input the number one in whatever application I was in so you can also use the uh, the open function in stream deck as a kind of like app switcher so you can switch between apps uh, so this would have the effect even if the calculator is open but you were in another application if you click on this uh, open calculator button it just switches back to the calculator and then you can use the buttons on the stream deck so there we go we've got that calculator now looking uh, pretty much the same as the one that you saw there except this is the black version and this is the white version uh, the black ones do sort of show up a bit better on the stream deck i think but the white are just more sort of the same uh, as the actual buttons on the calculator app itself so i can just show you that what that looks like on the stream deck now actually so here we've got the original one that i showed you in black and if i switch over to the white one it's a bit hard to see actually on the uh there we go that's a bit better if it's not pointing to the light it's quite clear with the white version but i think definitely the uh the black version is certainly more crisp and clear but anyway both of those icon packs are available if I go back to my Ecamm Live I can switch it back over to my desktop <laughs> so both of those icon packs are available on the uh, the website so I'll put a link to that in the description but it's quite easy to remember it's just takeonetech.io and so if you go over there and click on the store then you'll see that the icon pack is available there for download if you have found this uh, video useful then please don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe down below and switch on notifications so that you'll be notified whenever I post any new videos as I've said I'm going to be doing a whole series on stream deck and how I use it for productivity 
If you've got any questions about how I'm using the Stream Deck, then obviously please feel free to go and leave a comment about that as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Or if you've got any ideas for any other use cases that you'd like to see uh, reviews on, then uh, I'm always happy to look at other ideas as well. That's about all for me today. So I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos that I've linked to just over here. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a great day, everyone.